we've got 2K21 news and leaks. So, fun story. I actually did a 2K21 news video, and I even made some predictions about how 2K21 current gen would be. And that was a copy and paste of 2K20. But from these leaks, it looks like that may not be the case. And that is great news for all of us because we can all agree that 2K20 is not a great game. There's just so much to cover, so I don't want to waste any time. But first, I stream on Twitch now. So make sure you go in the description and follow me on Twitch. Also, make sure you hit that subscribe button and turn on post notifications if you're new. We are on the road to 6K, and you see that we are really damn close. And of course, if you haven't hit that like button, make sure you hit that like button. It helps me out a lot. So I'm going to pull up some pictures from the article, but... Here seems to be the talk of the 2K21 leaks, and that is 6'8 point guards being the max height. 6'8 is the max height for point guards. Now, for the OG players, or for those that aren't the OG players, I should say, we used to be able to have 6'7 point guards, and now it's 6'6. So, we had 6'7 point guards that could pretty much do everything. There's no reason to not make them. You can be tall as hell. They're fast enough to keep up with the small guards, and you can just bully them in the paint. So it could be the case, but the last couple years, 2K actually made these tall guards really slow. And their ratings with the dribbling, the shooting, it absolutely plummets. So that might be the case here. But maybe, just maybe, 6'8 guards will be demi nuts again. So I see some people are happy about this, and a lot of people aren't. But, I can't lie, I missed my 6'6 outside guard from 2K16, and many Mr. 6'7 outside were balanced point guards. So, let me know what you think. Are you happy about 6'8 point guards, or are you absolutely dreading it? I don't know, man. I, I kind of like it. I'm not going to lie to you. So, for our next piece of news, the badge system, the badge progression system from 2K20 will be back a lot of you think that's a W, and it's cool. I mean, it wasn't terrible, it's just, we don't like playing my career a lot. You know, us Park, pro -Am, Rack, Stage players, we don't like playing my career. We just want to play with our friends against real people, and not just be in the my career against bots. So, you got the same progression system. Cool. Can it be a little faster? Can we get our badges faster, 2K? Because... Like I said, we don't like being in my career for too long. Like, it shouldn't take two weeks to get all of our badges. That is just absurd. And I've never had to do that. In 2K15, 2K16, you can get your badges and your 99 overall all in one day. Can we just have that again? Like, we don't want my career to be too grindy, 2K. We want to go to the park or the stage, pro-am, rack. Whatever you guys want to do. But, yeah. Make my career less grindy. And they got rid of quick draw and brought back the jump shot speed thing and the jump shot creator. So, there's obviously going to be mixed. Obviously, the majority is happy quick draw is gone. And, you know, I feel it, man. But at the same time, is every build going to be have a quick release? In my opinion, center shouldn't be able to get a quick release. And there are certain lockdown builds that I don't think should get a quick release. I think only shooting builds, you know, like shot creators, sharp shooters, only they should be able to get quick releases. You know, builds that are actually supposed to be able to shoot. I mean, I don't want to see two-way slash and playmakers with Hall of Fame quick draw type shooting. That's just going to be way too overpowered. So let me know what you think about that. So remember in 2K17 when you had to aim your stick, your right stick at the basket to get a boost in your jump shot? A lot of us didn't like that too much, so 2K got away from it. In fact, I think they patched in 2K17, I don't remember. But they apparently are going to bring it back. Now, I gotta say, I'm not thrilled about this. I don't like right stick shooting. I don't want it to be in the game. I want right stick to be for dunks and layups in X or square, depending on your Xbox or PlayStation for jump shots because there'll be too many times where I go for a dunk or a layup and it makes me do a jump shot or a pull up. Now, 
the right set for like hop jumpers and you know all those moving shots that's cool but right set for jump shots to me that ain't it so hopefully this part ain't true now think about it like this take off the shot meter also boosts your green window so if you're not using shot meter and you're using the right stick to aim at the basket you're gonna have a very high percentage chance of making that shot are you happy about this feature coming back me no but maybe you are especially if you're a 2k17 player well a guy that enjoyed 2k17 a lot and if you're one of the five people that enjoyed this feature so I'm not gonna lie, I haven't really been reading these to y'all, you know, they're pretty long and I don't want to spend too much of the video reading, but this one I will read out. So on the defensive end, you can expect a much stronger presence from bigs in the paint. Block Tardian has been improved so it will be easier to send weak shots back and we've loaded up more coverage for contact in the paint to slow down overpowered moves like last year's hop step layup. Now, this part right here makes me suspect that this leak might actually be fake because 2K is not just going to openly admit that a move was overpowered. At least I've never seen that. You know, if, if I'm wrong, let me know. But admitting that a move is broken in OP, you know, it's kind of sketchy, you know. But if this is true, that's great. Now, here's the thing. With 2K20, paint defense is really weird. Like, there are certain takes and layups where... The opponent's B or they're out of position, yet 2K will get them like a glitchy ass contest or block. And then there will be ones where you're in perfect position and they don't give you a contest animation. So hopefully 2K can just make it just right. No bailout contest animations, you know, no letting someone get beat and then they can just morph back into the play. Like, we need skill gap on offense and defense. That's all people don't realize. People, when they talk about skill, when we talk about skill gap, we're talking about offense all the time, but there should be skill gap in defense as well. Like, it shouldn't just be, oh, well, I'm on a lockdown build with this many defensive badges, so I should just be able to get all the bumps, all the steals, all the blocks, all the contests. No. Like, you should actually have to, you know, there should actually be some stick skill to play some defense. So, once again, let me know what you guys think about this. Obviously, Paint defense is a strong topic in the 2K community, especially this year. The main thing I want to see is hands up defense, standing defense be improved because there's just times for improved position, hands up, and they just take it up and you get no contest. But if you jump, they're just going to put it up. Or if you jump and make a miss, they're just going to get their own rebound because it's going to put you in animation. So, I don't know. So, these last two things are huge. So, there's a question, is there going to be cross progression between current and next gen NBA 2K21? So apparently there's going to be a my team cross progression and a shared VC wallet with the same console family, PS4 to PS5, Xbox One to Xbox Series X. Look, this ain't a my team channel, so we're not going to talk too much about my team. But the VC, that sounds great, but unfortunately... It sucks for people like me that are on Xbox One that I'm strongly considering switching to PlayStation on the next gen, so I'm not going to be able to benefit from this. Also, will anything in my career slash my player transfer over? And the answer is no. Your my player inventory and progress will not transfer as the experience will be different for NBA 2K21 on next gen consoles. We'll have more to share later this year. So, although there's a big change between 2K20 and 2K21 current gen, I do think the current gen 2K21 and the next gen 2K21 are going to be two completely different games. So this does make sense. Obviously, it's going to suck grinding current gen, and then on next gen, you got to do it all over again. But, it's probably going to be a different kind of game. You know what I mean? Like... We're going to have the demo on August 24th, that was confirmed as well. August 24th demo, September 4th release date for the full game. Of course 2K21 is going to come out the same day as The Boys Season 2. Come on man, I mean I guess I can watch The Boys Season 2 while I'm grinding my career, but still. Now the last thing, I don't, 
I could I just looked at pictures on Twitter for the article stuff. I didn't actually go in the article and screenshot myself. But I didn't find anything about how dribbling is going to be completely different. Apparently, there's going to be a whole new dribble system, which is music to my ears because I am a guard. And dribbling in 2K20 is not exactly good. Now, obviously, you can make it work, and there are some nice moves. However, dribble speed, along with game speed, I hope that gets addressed. Game speed needs to go up, way up. If you played 14, 15, 16, 17, you would know that faster game speed is just so much better. Makes the game so much more fun. But there's also a lot of unwanted animations. Like it'll make you do a sham god for no reason. It'll make you do all this weird stuff for no reason and stop and all that stuff. All the stupid bump animations, like bump steals. And just, it doesn't feel smooth at all. I mean... Dribbling needs a complete rework. It actually needs a buff. I mean, it's funny because 2K does this for one reason, one reason only. To stop Steezo. And 2K, I think it's quite clear you guys are not stopping Steezo. So stop it. You're ruining the game for everyone else to try and stop one guy. That is unstoppable. So, that's pretty much all we got. So... Let me know if there's anything I missed and you would like me to discuss. And are you excited for these leaks? Are you excited for NBA 2K21 on the current gen? If this is all true, then it looks like current gen might actually be a W and not just a copy and paste game of 2K20. Now, if you missed the trailer breakdown and if you missed the trailer period, make sure you watch my trailer breakdown. I'm going to leave that on the end screen and also... Agent had an interview on 2K TV with Mike Wang, Alexis Morgan, and LD2K, and I broke that down as well. So make sure you check that out, and if there's any more 2K21 news, I will be sure to cover it. So make sure you hit that subscribe button, turn on post notifications so you don't miss it. But, I hope you guys enjoyed. Click a video on the end screen. I will see you there, or I will see you on the next one. But I am out. Peace!